Yesterday was Maundy Thursday. We gathered together and celebrated communion as we remembered Jesus' last meal with his disciples. Tonight, we observe the tenebrae service, or service of shadows, as we remember Jesus' crucifixion and death on the cross. During the service, we will hear the last seven words of Christ read from the Gospels. As you hear his last words, remember the agony and sacrificial love of our Savior. Welcome to worship. We have been asked to say a special prayer for those of our friends and church family whose names are on the church prayer list. In a moment, we will corporately go to prayer together, and I will read the names, thereby focusing on each one momentarily. 
At the end, I will ask for a blessing and a touch from God for each one. Will you join me at the throne of grace? Dear Heavenly Father, on this night, when we remember the first hours that your son spent in an earthly tomb signifying his separation from you because you cannot look on sin and he had taken on the sin of the world. This was the work of the cross that he completed when he arose on the third day, as he said he would. Father, on this night, we lift up the names of those among us with specific needs. Wallace Almarode, Josephine Duggar, David Morris, Beverly Carmack, Jan Carson, Allie Ashlock, Betty Cobb, Kate Sequera, Stephanie and Jeremy Crowell, Stephen Farr, Bonnie Sheets, Linda Clark, Robert Lee, Catherine Cottrell, Walter Cantman, Evie Keister, Craig Lavish, Michael Livingston, Vicki Lynch, Ellen Moosman, Shelley Sissom, Roland Chappell, Charlie Marshall, Krista Ernest, Michelle Parker, Clint Hoover, Irma Ford, Jimmy Wright, Joanne Stewart, Tracy Williams, Andy Shore, Myra Horn, Dale Hudson, Jean Strickland, Emily Taylor, Becky Purcell, Mary Jo Reed, Murdy Payne, Diane Helzer, Thompson Wagoner, Bill and Barbara Henderson, Kathy Pullum, Cheryl Stone, Nicholas Milosevic, Shane McBee, Caesar Garza, Clay Smith, Alex Vaughn, Ty Graham, Josh Cobb, Carl Cox, Hastings Miller, John L. Walsh, Caleb Hicks, David Christy Nix, Jared McLaughlin, Sam Wombles, Edward Brown, Ben Wing, Gray Hodnut, Dave Penfield. And if there be any unspoken needs, we include them now. Lord, you know each need represented in this list. We ask for a special touch for each one. Strengthen their hearts and bodies and their caregivers. Thank you for your watch care over each one of us and for the tender way you love each of us. We ask your blessing on this service. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen.
Let us now sing together our hymn of passion, hymn number 145, Alas, and did my Savior bleed. Please stand as we sing together. I don't know why, but this time when we came to Jerusalem for the Passover, I brought this with me. Something tugged at my heart that day as we walked out to travel here. Something told me that this little piece of cloth would somehow give me comfort. And so I, I ran back inside to the tiny basket that I had it hidden in. I pulled it out and I, I tucked it up underneath my clothes near my heart so that I wouldn't lose it. Oh, to you, it's just, just an old piece of cloth. It's just a rag for wiping up spills and scouring things with. But to me, to me it's a reminder, a reminder of the plan my Lord had for my son his son. Oh, I remember that night, that night when we wrapped him up in this tiny blanket, that night when we stumbled up to the stable, that night when, when the star stopped over the manger where I laid him. The angels sang, and the shepherds came, and my heart fell in love with a baby boy and broke at the same time. Because you see, I knew I couldn't keep him. Oh, I could keep a lock of his hair, and, and I kept a picture of his footprints and his hands. And I kept this, this piece of cloth that we wrapped him in. But I could not keep him, at least not the way that I wanted to. 
My son died today. They nailed him. They killed him on a cross. All these years I feared I would lose him. All these years I feared today. But now I realize, I realize if I had not lost my son today, my Lord could not have found me. My son died today, but my Lord was born today. Oh, I will miss my son, but I'll see him again real soon. And until then, I'll hold on to this.
Luke 23, 32 through 34. Two other men, both criminals, were also led out with him to be executed. When they came to the place called the Skull, there they crucified him along with the criminals, one on his right, the other on his left. Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. And they divided up his clothes by casting lots. These are the words of our Lord. Luke 23, 39 through 43. One of the criminals who hung there hurled insults at him. Aren't you the Messiah? Save yourself and us. But the other criminal rebuked him. Don't you fear God, he said, since you are under the same sentence? We are punished justly, for we are getting what our deeds deserve. But this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus answered him, Truly I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. May God bless the reading, hearing, and understanding of his word. Luke 25, John 25, 19, 25 through 27 says, And that is what the soldiers did. Meanwhile, standing near the cross of Jesus, were his mother and his mother's sister, Mary the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing beside her, he said to the mother, Woman, here is your son. Then he said to the disciple, Here is your mother. And from the hour that hour, the disciple took her into his own home. This is the reading. May God bless the reading of his word. Matthew 27, 45, and 46. From the sixth hour until the ninth hour, darkness came over all the land. About the ninth hour, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lama shabachthani, which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? This is the word of our Lord Jesus Christ. John 1928 Later knowing that everything had now been finished and so that the scripture would be fulfilled Jesus said I am thirsty These are the words of our Lord
John nineteen twenty nine through thirty. A jar of wine vinegar was there, so they soaked a sponge in it, put the sponge on a so- on a stalk of the hyssop plant, and lifted it to Jesus' lips. When he had received the drink, Jesus said, "It is finished." With that, he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. May God bless the reading of his word. Luke 23, 44 through 46. It was now about the sixth hour, and darkness came over the whole land until the ninth hour, for the sun stopped shining. And the curtain of the temple was torn in two. Jesus called out with a loud voice, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. And when he said this, he breathed his last. And these are the last words of our Lord. There is a fountain filled with blood drawn from Emmanuel's veins and sinners plunged beneath that flood lose all their guilty stains. It is the music of our tradition as Baptist Christians. And in our preaching, it is also filled with blood too. You can't get around it. It is awful and bitter, and terrible, and amazing, and beautiful. Blood is so prevalent in our faith. I think it is there because it is a sign of how much we love the cross of Jesus. The cross repels us with its agony, and it draws us close because of the love of the one who hung there on Good Friday. Many people are afraid of the sight of blood. I have a good friend who is a captain in the U.S. Army, and he will not donate blood because he is afraid of the sight of it, and it literally makes him pass out. My nose used to bleed a lot when I was a little boy. I'd wipe my nose, and sometimes there would be blood there. On hot days, I can remember playing with my friends, and sometimes one of my friends would say, Hey, there's blood, Mike. You've got blood on your shirt. And sure enough, I did get blood sometimes on my clothes and on my pillow. It was a mess. Someone told me to take a piece of a grocery sack paper and stick it between my teeth and my lips right here in the middle. And it would constrict that vein, that vessel that would provide blood to my nose. And it worked for me. Once, when Samuel was a baby, they had to admit him to the hospital. And since he was so small, they couldn't put the IV into his arm, so they put it into his leg. And when they did it, it bled. They squeezed his little heel to take blood. It was an awful sight for me. It was hard to look at. And sometimes when we sing these songs in church, filled with blood, and we hear these sermons about blood, We want to soften it down a little bit, don't we? Especially for the sake of the children. We don't want them exposed to all of this blood of Jesus, do we? The Greek word kerygma is used by scholars to explain the early message that Christians tried to share with their neighbors in the world. Kerygma simply means preaching or proclamation. The preaching of the early church was very simple. Paul put it this way, 
we preach Christ and Him crucified. Like it or not, blood, the cross, is central to our faith and our theology. When Baptists first began, they wanted to get to the purity of Christian faith. So they got rid of all the symbols that you would find in churches of that day. No human creed, no images, no paintings, no liturgy or lectionary, no image made by a human. Some said the cross that had Jesus on it should also go because Jesus was no longer on the cross. He came down, was buried, and rose again. He is risen, you know. So just a simple cross still does it for most of us Baptist Christians. Still, that cross, that emblem of suffering and shame and blood is very precious to us. And maybe from time to time, we need to visualize Jesus on that cross with that blood and sweat and water coming mingling down for our sakes, all our sins, all our guilty stains, washed away by the blood of Jesus. Yes, Jesus died for you. Jesus died for us. That's our preaching, isn't it? From the very start. But as I've traveled this earth and spent a good bit of my time in church, I have found that I appreciate the cross in a deeper way than I did when I was younger. It means more to me today, honestly, to say that Jesus shed his blood for me or that Jesus died on the cross for my sake than it used to. In seminary, I was given a book by a German named Jürgen Moltmann entitled The Crucified God, and it has stuck with me all these years. God crucified. Think about that. I've said it before. I've said it with Paul. I preach Christ and Him crucified. I have been amazed at the cross of Jesus, repelled by it and drawn to it. But to imagine that is the Son of God hanging on the cross. It's why we gather tonight. Why for you? Why for me? I have long believed that God knows all things. The big word for it is omniscience. But in the cross, on this Good Friday, I think something new happened that is forever in the life of God. The father, you know, lost his son. And the son struggled and then drew his very last breath before death shrouded him. Moltmann pointed out that when Jesus died, he cried the cry of the God forsaken. You remember, my God, my God, why, why hast thou forsaken me? Then Sunday came, Easter came. I will only hint of that tonight. But when it came, all of that experience for God personally in the cross became wrapped up forever in the Trinity, wrapped up forever in the life of God. On that cross, Jesus was dying for my sins and for yours. His blood dripping down for our sakes and for all those who believe. And the death of Jesus on the cross forever means that when we cry out to that God of ours, when we feel forsaken or lost or humbled or hurt or when we're suffering, we cry out to a God who knows all things. We can call on a God who knows what it's like to lose a child, to lose someone that God loved deeply and watch them slip away. We call on a God who knows what it's like to struggle to breathe, but then finally to give up the struggle and to close his eyes 
for the last time. We call on a God from whatever place we find ourselves in in this world. A God who knows exactly what it feels like to be abandoned, to be lost and forsaken. Our God is this God hanging on that cross with all that blood. That's our God. No wonder it repels us and no wonder it draws us so close to him. When we call on God, we call on a God who knows us more intimately than we could ever imagine. It's why when we talk about our faith, we're not just talking about believing a set of propositions. We're talking about personal trust in God. We're talking about Jesus. We're talking about our God who knows us and we love him for it. And we're talking about the God who continually propels us out of here to try to identify with every person who is lost and hungry and hurting and feeling abandoned in this world because we know on the cross that's exactly what Jesus was doing for you and me. There is a fountain filled with blood drawn from Emmanuel's veins and sinners plunged beneath that flood lose all their guilty stains, lose all their guilty stains, lose all their guilty stains. And sinners plunged beneath that flood lose all their guilty stains. Yes, that's right. And so much more. So much more. We preach Christ and Him crucified. Amen. This time, we will read our parting sentences together, and then we will remain for the tolling of the bell and then depart our sanctuary in silence. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God, and afflicted. He was wounded for our transgressions, and he was bruised for our iniquities. We all, like sheep, have gone astray. Each of us turned our own way. And the Lord has laid upon him the iniquity of us all.
Hello, I'm Mike Oliver. I'm the senior pastor here at Trinity Baptist Church. I'd like to thank you for joining us for worship through our church website. And also, I'd like to invite you to come and visit us. This is a great church. We have friendly people here. We value worship. We value community and global missions. And there are programs for children all the way to senior adults. I think you'll like our church, and I hope you'll come and visit us and see for yourself in person. If you have questions about our church, like to know more, we'd love for you to contact us. There's information on our website. You can call us or email us or come by, and one of our staff members will be glad to talk with you. Welcome to Trinity, and God bless you and keep you.